Welcome to Portland Media Center Member Highlights. I'm Leslie McVeigh, and my guest today is Steve Kelly, who is a certified vision rehabilitation therapist, therapist with the Iris Network. Hi, Steve. How are you, Leslie? I'm fine. Now, we're going to talk about services that people can get, um, the community services. Mm -hmm. And you want to explain a little bit about what that means. And community is not just this community, but it's the whole state. It is the whole state of Maine. And, and I just want to ask you, prior to this, did you ever have, had you ever heard of a vision rehab therapist? Actually, I had. Oh, my gosh. Because You're one I, of very few then. Well, I, I have a story there that we won't go into right okay. now. But okay. yes. Well, usually when I ask that question, if I'm doing a presentation, I see no hands uh, go up. So uh, people are very unaware of what a vision rehab therapist is and what our profession is. We are not medical professionals. We are rehabilitation professionals. And we often see people after the doctor says to them, there's mo nothing more we can do for you. And what the doctor really means is there is nothing more in terms of refraction for eyeglasses. So I work with people who have a vision loss that's not correctable by wearing a pair of glasses. So it can be anything from just a little difficulty reading the newspaper to total blindness. And we've got community services that are statewide where we actually work with people in their homes. And it's very uh, individualized. Mm -hmm. It's based on what their goals are. And uh, we write up a plan, and then we work with the individuals on those goals. And I suppose once they're, they're told by their doctor, OK, this is it. This is, y y you help them adapt to the idea that this is what their vision is now. There's usually so, an awful lot of anxiety. Yeah. And, you know, um, th that, that is just one area, but it's also common for a person who's having, um, was recently diagnosed with, say, macular degeneration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or diabetic retinopathy. That's another um, common thing uh, for folks who are aging. And uh, it's so much better, I think, if we hear from people early on. But you know, there's, there's a stigma about vision loss and blindness. We don't want to talk about it. Yeah. It, we're afraid of it. I've, if you ever saw the statistics about, you know, what are people afraid of, you see cancer and blindness almost at, at the very top of the list. So we don't want to talk about it. Yeah. We don't want to mention it to our family and friends. Um, but to be honest, it's, um, it's great when somebody calls and just says, you know, I'm, I'm having some trouble reading the newspaper. The doctor recently told me I've got macular degeneration. And um, we can make a referral, or the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired can make a referral and send us to work with that person. Right. And as we get older, I mean, it's something we should be all be talking about. Oh, absolutely. Because our eyes are just like the rest of our body. Sure. You know, they're not going to go the full distance the way they were when we started. That's exactly right. And so we need to be recognizing this. Sure. Uh, our, my profession, we're not medical doctors. Mm -hmm. We are not in the medical p field per se. We're rehab professionals. But part of my job is advocacy. And as an advocate for eye health and eye care, you know, I would love to see a lot more people going in much sooner to have a dilated eye exam. I think. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes these things we're talking about, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, uh, macular degeneration, those are like the top three as we age. There's no, there's no pain involved in those things. And, and sometimes the, it's a very gradual thing. All of a sudden you're just having a little trouble um, reading the newspaper, reading mm -hmm. a book, driving, seeing faces across mm -hmm. the room. Those are all things that become a little more difficult. And people just kind of put it off as, yeah. you know, yeah. it's a sign of age. Go to the drugstore and buy some readers. and oh, That's and then, exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would be great to, to um, be working with folks at a little bit earlier time where we can mm -hmm. talk about some of the things that we normally do. We talk about contrast and glare. We talk about magnification, mm -hmm. uh, lighting, getting from point A to point B, um, that sort of yeah. thing. Well, let's talk about some of the the rehab services that you provide and a lot of it is involves going to the person's home 
and actually working with them there rather than having them come to you. That's correct. In, um, at least with the IRIS network, we have a, um, a, a, a large community-based service. That's probably our biggest program. And our partner with that, that program is the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the state of Maine, mm -hmm. DBVI. And it's actually a contract. So oftentimes a referral comes in to either them or to us. Either place is fine. And by the way, people don't need to have their doctor make a referral. Anyone can pick up the phone and say, you know, I'm having difficulty reading the newspaper. I would like to work with a vision rehab therapist mm -hmm. or see what services are available. And they're, and they're able to do that. And they're able to do that. Well, that's, that's great news. Oh, it is, yeah. And, you know, they'll, they'll meet with somebody from DBVI uh -huh. is usually how it starts. And then services will be determined from that. Um, a mm -hmm. person could also make uh, an appointment with our low vision clinic, which is more of a medical thing. That's, that's something that, you know, their doctor may suggest as a next step. So mm -hmm. that's another service. We also have the access technology and employment services, which we call at ease because as soon as you start talking about technology, everybody gets nervous. Yeah. Am I going to break the computer? <laughs> Am I going to be able to see the computer screen? So that's at ease. And then we also have a rehab center, which um, is focused on people who are employment bound. Mm -hmm. And that's more of a national service. Uh, folks from Maine are certainly welcome to, to participate in that, but we also have folks from outside of Maine that come there. Oh, that's So amazing. those are primarily our, our big programs. Right. But you work, you know, I was reading on, online a little bit about what you do and, and the things that you do going into the home, helping people adapt their kitchens, say, and, and right. how, I mean, things that you don't think about normally, and, and when your vision starts to go, just, you know, is something turned off, or Correct. how do you iron if you're losing your vision and make right. sure, talk a little bit about well, some of those things. Everybody's going to have their own priorities. Yeah. I, you know, I'm thinking about someone who is like a, a handy person around the house, and all of a sudden they're having difficulty using their tools and mm -hmm. that sort of thing because they're having difficulty seeing. Um, so that that might be something. Um, employment, uh, even though we often see um, people who are living at home independently, elders, there are a lot of folks that we see in an employment situations. Mm -hmm. Someone who's having difficulty all of a sudden managing some paperwork or seeing the computer screen, that is now a big one. Yeah. Um, someone trying to use the iPad with a little less vision than they had before, I mm -hmm. mean, that's pretty typical. But there are all kinds of, uh, you know, leisure activities. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm just thinking of all the different crafting activities. Some mm -hmm. of my coworkers have worked with people who have been crocheting and all of a sudden they're dropping stitches and they're having oh. trouble seeing it. So it, it's, it, you know, it runs the, the full gamut. Right. Um, and athletics too. Athletics, um, exactly. Like runners or swimmers, you know, to sort of Precisely. adapt it so they can keep doing those things. In, in, in a lot of ways, uh, I, I think our profession we're problem solvers. I mean, uh -huh. so we go in and we kind of listen to what's happening with the person, where they're trying to go, what they're challenged with, and then um, we try to solve those problems or challenges, figure out, and, and we call them adaptive daily living skills. Mm -hmm. But basically, whatever we're approaching, we approach it with the idea of, well, how can we adapt this so that person is able to do it a little bit more effectively or efficiently? Right. And, and when you do these home visits, um, it doesn't mean just Portland. You can go to Presque Isle. You can go to... Oh, anywhere. Oh. We can go out to the islands. It, it really, it, it doesn't oh, matter. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. We've, we've met people in the local library if it's uh -huh. more comfortable oh, for them. Or, right. you know, if reading is one of the things that's going on or, mm -hmm. or using the, the computer in the library, you know, we'll meet a person there. We're pretty flexible as far as that goes. Well, being an island person part-time, um, I love the idea that you go to the islands because yeah. they're, they're often not given a lot of the or have access to a lot of services. And folks may think that it's not available to mm -hmm. them. And by the way, I just want to say the community-based program is at no cost to individuals. This is uh -huh. paid for through 
DBVI funding. It's, wow. you know, we've paid for this through our tax dollars right. over the years. So, you know, if a person needs a magnifying glass or they need some lighting or something like that, sometimes there's a negotiation process. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if, if a person does not have the means to, to get those things, and yeah. I think it's going to help them stay independent, the state will sometimes step in or have a conversation. Can you split it with us 50-50? So I don't want people to worry about funding for this right. kind of a service. Right. Um, it's, it's there and there's usually no cost right. for it. So people take advantage of this. I, well, think, I mean, yeah. it's wonderful. It's, a, it's, it's like this big secret that we yeah, all uh, want to know I, about. I know, you, you just reminded me, I said <laughs> earlier, it's like sometimes my coworkers and I say, we are the best kept secret in the state of Maine. But, you know, the, the flip side of it is, just to be um, um, candid, who wants to talk about vision loss and blindness? Yeah. We, you know, there's such a stigma attached yeah. to that that we don't want to admit that we have a vision loss. Yeah. We're uncomfortable with the topic. Um, and as you said before, you know, as we age, main ages, mm -hmm. um, I think it's one of those things we just need to get a little bit more comfortable with. Yeah. It, you know, it, it does have its scary components. I'm not going to be a Pollyanna about mm -hmm. this. There's no question about it. And I talk with people every single day about this subject. And, um, but you know, sometimes it's not easy, but right. let's talk about it. Let's figure yeah. out a solution. You know, and that's the kind sooner of where, you where do, the, the, the easier it becomes. Uh, that's it. A lot of these things, computers are easy because I know a little something about them. Mm -hmm. But for example, most of us didn't grow up with friends who were blind or had low mm -hmm. vision. It's just, we don't have a whole lot of experience mm -hmm. with that. We don't know, for example, that most computers can talk to you. Mm -hmm. You can either put software in it or just turn <laughs> on uh, a switch yeah. and the computer will then start reading things that yeah. are on it. Is there a learning curve? You bet there's a learning curve. But we, right. we so many times, uh, I will see somebody who's, who said, oh, I stopped using the computer, I can't see the screen. It's like, Doctor. why? <laughs> <laughs> Why, you know, it's yeah. an important part of your life. Yeah. Let's figure out a yeah. way that you're going to be using yeah. that computer again. And, and, and your iPhone, I realize, talks to you sometimes when you don't want it to. It, it but may. It, it, it <laughs> right. Well, you've got, there's a, a setting in there where you can yeah. turn on voiceover and you can begin using the, there are so many people yeah. who are totally blind, see absolutely nothing at all, yeah. that rely on their iPhone. Mm -hmm. And it's the same one that you and I buy at the store. <laughs> yeah. They just turn voiceover on and they yeah. know how to use it. Yeah. And, and it's just, you know, bringing out these other senses that we sort of put aside sometimes. In some cases, that's, the, that's yeah. true, too. Well, thank you so much for all this information. And if people want to learn more, uh, they can get in touch with you oh, at the IRIS Network. And it's um, uh, www.theiris.org. And they can reach us in state 774-6273. And I'd also encourage folks to call the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired too if they want to make a referral or get a little more information in their area. That's yeah. another option. Well, this is terrific and we'll get you back again and talk about even more stuff. That I need do. to make one more plug. Okay. Um, vision Rehabilitation Therapists, we have our Awareness Week. It's coming up the second week of April, uh -huh. around April 14th which is the um, birthday of Annie Sullivan. Oh. And if you think about Annie Sullivan, she mm -hmm. was really one of the pioneers she of was. my profession. Yeah. So Vision Rehab Therapist Awareness Week is the week of April 14th. Wonderful. Well, congratulations. Yeah, well, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much.